here I am with my beloved students from my workshop back in June. And it's become very clear to me that when I say things about my workshop, like I don't want to give the same advice to 10 different people. And it's all about being personalized. That really coming from me, I don't think that gives anybody any idea of what actually goes on in a situation like this. So I thought the best way to give them an idea would be to have you all just chat about it a little bit and say what the hell actually happened uh, in this workshop. This group that we're looking at here is some people from one unit, some people from another. All I did was give some short talks about project-based versus skill-based learning, advocating for project-based work for most people throughout their learning. And then I gave some short talks about here's how you research pictures, here's how you gather reference, here's how long pictures take. And then the rest of it was really about reacting to the individual experiences that everyone was having. That's really it from me. So I'm just interested to hear from you all. Let's think about it this way. It's two months out now. What do you still think about two months out? What have been your, your takeaways? At least when it comes to what still goes through my mind, the only tenant of art is if it stops you from making the picture, it's wrong. And that has leaked into almost every facet of my life. In a subjective life, it's become such an objective tenant to live by. Um, I think a, a big thing for me personally, this kind of constant reflecting on how thoughtful I'm being in my practice. I find, and probably other people find as well, that you often fall into holes without realizing it. You suddenly make a realization that you've been thoughtless for a certain period of time, or you haven't been thinking about the type of things you want to be thinking about. Often, Stephen's videos would be a thing that would help me make realizations like that. For me, this workshop was just having that, but as a dialogue, you know, and reflecting on how thoughtful I've been to a group of people and Stephen, like week to week and like showing what I've done, decrease the amount of time it takes for me to make realizations. And that's been really helpful to me. I, I've been thinking about it in terms of the, the classic definition of, of what we might call hard skills in art or like the technical skills. And then versus what we often think of as, as soft skills, which are, are the capacity for self-reflection, exploring your opinions. And I, I've kind of based on my experience in this workshop, reframed that thought process. How much utility actually those quote unquote soft skills have, they're almost like super tangible. They actually allow you to utilize and, and connect these various technical skills together to work on a project. And you're perhaps somewhat uniquely equipped to run a workshop like this because you did a good job of setting up like how we exp how we might explore those opinions that we have and understand what we want to do as artists. It all feels very connected and, and that has been something that I've noticed that has proved my my output over the past two months. To dovetail on on all of those comments, there's the sense of having built this like positive framework for my art making that I got out of the workshop. But there was also the like removal of these narratives I had in my head about the way it was supposed to be. I think a lot of us realized that we had a lot of preconceived notions about the way that concept design actually is based on what we see from a lot of people we follow on social media. <laughs> you just like create a fully formed, beautiful painting just in like one go. All of us have kind of been taken by these narratives that it's supposed to be these processes, these creative processes are very clean. Removing all of that makes us helps us to reprioritize and recontextualize the way that we do our own art. Part of the process is ideation and ideation seems like it's a soft skill, like Nate said, and yet it is quite tangible. Like there's actually things you can do through the workshop and through all of the discussions with the, with the rest of the community we've built. All of that became quite real for me and I've implemented it in actual pieces I've worked on. I had just recently completed my undergrad in illustration. I walked away with a portfolio, admittedly a portfolio that I don't really use anymore because it's mostly like editorial design, poster design, and I draw like creepy eldritch gods. I started to like develop this sense that I had missed out on something. And so I was like, oh shit, there's just so many things that I don't know that like clearly other people know. I need to go and I need to study all of these books and I need to do all of these studies. Walking into this class was just like enlightening in that like I didn't miss anything, of course. And it's way more about the balance and how can I like utilize my skills-based learning in my project-based learning. Kat's gonna make uh, an appearance. 
he gets a little like shout out. Hi, Pompey. Didn't quite know how to like implement skills based learning where where you like identify gaps in your learning. Kind of just eliminating the shame was just so important. And I didn't really recognize how important that was. I think eliminating the shame and finding the balance between like skills based and project based was really important for me. When I think about the workshop, the space I was at, like going in, I just really didn't enjoy making art, but knew that it was something that I cared about deeply and that I wanted to kind of tunnel down and figure out like, well, what is not working here? One of the things that I really appreciated about the way that you laid everything out, Stephen, was how careful you were with the language that you use in regards to our critiques and speaking about um, people's art. It, there was no judgment or anything, what you sort of did with the language that you used and some of the PowerPoints that you shared with us and then just some of your thoughts is, when I'm thinking about my art now, I am thinking a lot more personally. I'm not as concerned with other people's opinions or how I might think like my art will be perceived by others. It kind of the dialogue is like turned inward. The first week of the workshop, I didn't draw any pictures. I spent uh, the entire week like jotting down my thoughts relating to my art practice. Like previously, it didn't feel like it was something that was like a part of the practice. It felt like I was working on art. If I wasn't drawing, if I wasn't painting, then I wasn't actually doing anything. It's a lot more relaxed and I end up getting just as much, if maybe like a little bit less work done, but it's a lot more enjoyable. I really appreciated the experience. And then on top of that, having the groups, it was nice that we all got to mingle with each other as well, even though some of us were on different days. So it's been really nice to also get to know everybody else in here as well and, and learn from each other. For me, I, I'm, I'm a, what's it called, penny pincher. So like, I, I don't like spending money um, at all. And especially if it's, if it's something like this, where it's like, you don't really know what you're gonna expect. Because I had no expectation, I took everything that Stephen said very uh, personally, like soup. Like I would analyze it. At the end of the day, these are just words. You know, you don't really get better at drawing just because you talk to Stephen. I would think about what he would say to me over and over again. The things he would tell me were very um, things that wouldn't necessarily transfer to getting good at drawing. And this is something that's been super strange to me. This idea that fundamentals aren't everything. If you have gone through how to draw books. And you're like, I have no, like, what is the point? This is a workshop that you should attend. There's this one part in Kung Fu Panda. I don't know if you guys have watched Kung Fu Panda, where he opens a scroll and it's just him. That was like, that. that's the workshop. And um, it seems like, it seems like this, like, Disney, you know, Pixar thing. For some reason, that works. And I have no idea why. I cannot explain. It's, it's really strange. I don't know how much money I would pay. Like, I would pay so much more money for that. Um, because... There is no book, there's no tutorial that's going to teach you this. If you're in an online art community, it's, it's difficult to get um, like personalized feedback or personalized uh, advice from people and just talk to them. Just like it, it's difficult to find people like that. And uh, this was definitely a great way for me to, you know, get a peek behind, behind the corner and just to see or peek, peek behind the curtain to see um, how pictures are actually made. Because no one really explains that to you uh, in a very like thoughtful, not not procedural way. There was no procedure. He doesn't teach procedures, uh, and that's really the best thing about it is that it's very it's very personal. Like, and so if you find yourself feeling like I'm not doing it right, definitely it's this is this this workshop is definitely uh, just a place to start changing the way you think about your art practice. <laughs> and. Yeah, uh, so two months on, deep, a deep, deep satisfaction with where my art practice is going. The sense of calm, of not having to, oh gosh, I have to draw this now, it's not working out, leave it aside, start the next thing, oh no, it's not working out. Uh, none of that, that's gone. Now it's really engage with what it is that you want to draw. And the big thing for me, I think, was the greater emphasis on project-based work, where you decide to create something that has a deep resonance or meaning for you, and then you slowly, gently start taking the steps to make that be realised. So whether that is um, the research, the planning, figuring out what elements you require in your composition, and all of that can be done in 
its own little sort of time slots. A huge big part of it as well is accepting that it's not going to happen in three hours, four hours, maybe not 10 hours. In my case, it took over 100 hours. But it's to enjoy the process, not keep rushing for some end that you're never going to reach unless you take the time to actually enjoy the process. The process is actually so much more than the finished thing. Very, very grateful to this workshop for becoming more connected to that urge to create. Wait, so what would you hope as a result of like uh, the words coming out of my mouth? Like, what would you hope? Or like, what is your hope for this video? <laughs> Honesty, really. I'm not trying to hit mass appeal or to appeal to everybody or a general audience, right? So I always try to say what I really think and present the kind of person that I am and stick with that so that anyone who's not into it will just go somewhere else. However, yes. however weird you present your experience or anything, that's just going to be some person going to go, whoa, that workshop is not for me. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I need, right? I don't need to sell everybody on it. So I think that what you just said is the reason why I joined the class without kind of any sort of idea of what actually I would be getting. Like just hearing you talk in your videos, videos so truthfully, so passionately, it just, uh, it convinced me. So what, uh, it was just interesting that we all signed up for this class without knowing what was going to happen. Like it was so, <laughs> like, uh, it's kind of like a strange thing to spend money, like a very intangible thing to spend money on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like the way that you present yourself in your videos is the way that you are in real life. And it's just like so refreshing, it's just like really truthful. So I did start making pictures as a, re as a result of your workshop. And as a direct result of your workshop and making pictures, I did get some work. I did get my first big commission. For me, the important thing that I gained from your workshop is the problem solving mindset. There's like a way, uh, a kind of analytical way, something that I needed in order to what, analyze pictures, make pictures and figure out just how to go from beginning to end of pictures. Before the workshop, after the workshop, I had no pictures and now I have some pictures. I mean, that, that says everything. Hopefully I'm going to be fucking amazing. I want to be fucking amazing, man. Hell yeah. I want to make great work. There we go. Boom. Um, don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Honestly, Steven, I, I came across your YouTube channel at a random, stumbled across your YouTube channel. And then like the second or third video that I watched, you were like, hey, I'm hosting. I'm going to do a workshop. I was like, oh, I last time I was going to sign up for a workshop and I didn't. And it was Adam Duff's like mentorship thing. And I regret not signing up for it. Learned some cool stuff and not really know what I'm going to learn. Uh, just go with it. Now I'm not stressing out about my art as much anymore. So that's good. Sign up for the workshop, people. You don't even know. It's really hard to explain. <laughs> people, people tell, people ask me like, so what'd you get from the workshop? I'm like, ah. A lot, but it's really hard to put to words. I don't know. I totally understand. The reason I'm doing this is because I was like, damn, it's really hard to put into words what exactly yeah. happens in a month of this work. Yeah, it is. I was like, I need some help <laughs> here. I have no idea how to explain it, even though I'm the person running it. I, it's so weird because I joined the workshop also not having, like, I just saw it and I was like, oh, this is Steven's workshop. I have to sign up for this. Something will happen. A lot of the artistic improvement I've had become of the uh, because of the workshop and hindsight has been life improvement, like taking things more slow, not being as focused on the end result, realizing why I liked drawing in the first place. You're like, this is my hobby. You get your identity involved and then you feel this manic rush to compete with other people. And I've since the workshop put a hard break on all of that. I appreciate all of it more now, even though I watched a lot of your videos, Steven, beforehand. So I like intellectually grokked a lot of this stuff, but being here around everyone and talking to you and having to um, confront some of my old thought patterns in the, in, the, uh, in the big groups on Sundays when we would talk about it and you call me out a little bit, having to really ha make someone making you come to terms 
with um, some of your self-deceptions and some of the bad mindsets that maybe you've acquired, um, especially doing a solo practice if you haven't had any formal instruction. Um, that's what I've really gotten from the workshop. I feel more confident moving forward knowing that I have that calm, confident, um, grateful mindset to start from. I, I do want to make one more comment before we before we wrap this up that uh, we're doing this call. Uh, we didn't plan it for me to talk about the workshop. You guys had planned it already. The community has been maintained even after the workshop. You did a call, a group call last month to sort of catch up and show each other all of your work. I was in there. It was great to see the progress that you were all making and how you were carrying things forward. And here we are two months out and you're doing another call and catching up and sharing work. You need the community. We hear that a lot, but it's like, what does that actually mean? What is actually, what is the help that you're getting from the community? Hearing other people's problems. It's hearing that it's also hearing other people's critiques, right? In the workshop, that's how we covered a lot of the technical stuff. It was you were hearing technical knowledge from other people's critiques as well as your critiques. The continuation of the community is great to me. I will say one more thing. I trust you all that if you're having fun, something is going very, very right. I've seen enough art practices and I've seen enough turmoil in art practices that I really do fundamentally believe if you're experiencing this weird friction, this deep suffering while you're making your work, it is probably because of some uninvestigated assumption that your friends and your teachers can help you overcome, tackle, or turn around. I really have a lot of gratitude for you all, and I really thank you for uh, letting me collect some of your words to sort of offer a little bit of light to future students who are like, what the heck could actually be going on here? Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. I am going to say, get ready, okay? Uh-oh. I would never personally recommend this workshop to a friend. Um, or, and the only reason I did it is because I love Steven and he changed my life. And I'm like, yeah, give him money. He needs money. Like, he needs to be rich. Um, but other than that, like, I would never, that's not my own. Should I even, like, be here? Because, like, I kind of don't want to recommend it, like, personally. Mm -hmm. And the reason, I think there's a few reasons for that. The community, it's like, dude, this is a, such, it's like, it, it is a gamble. It's a gamble of what kind of community you're going to get. Right. And you talked about community a lot has being really important. It's like, I had no idea that the community was going to be more important than being in, in the class, you know? So it's like already that in and of itself is such like, how can you recommend anybody to that? The next thing is, um, I was so desperate. Like I was so desperate and I want to answer so badly. I would have taken anything. And that drive that like, I need to figure this out. Like I am, I cannot sleep. I cannot do anything. And I was so paralyzed. And I came to Steven, to this workshop, I'm like, I need help. And that sort of desperation was what made me so much more appreciative of the workshop, right? It's like, if, if, I, don't, if I don't figure this out here, it's over. And that sort of desperation is what made me love the workshop because it sort of resolved the answers for me. Yeah. And then the, the last thing would be, um, if I tell people it's good, there's an expectation. There's an expectation that it's going to be good. And this is why I'm so glad that I'm the first one or like the first set in the workshop is like, there's no expectation. It's not like us where people are like, yeah, it's good. And you should do it. It's like, if I go into that workshop and it's not good, then I'm going to be like, yo, what the hell? Like you guys are all lying to me, right? There's this sort of dis distrustment. And um, I think because of those three things, the experience of recommending a workshop, workshop to somebody is like the range is infinite. Like, there's no like, oh, you're going to have a generally good time, right? Because there's some people um, who have vastly different experiences than me. And um, that is not something I can account for when I talk to my friend about it, right? So um, yeah, I'm curious to, to know what you think about that. Uh, I or, love or it. Everybody can. Yeah. I, I personally love it. I mean, I don't, I, un I understand where you're coming from completely. I mean, me too, as a person, uh, some of my favorite some of my favorite movies are movies I would never tell anyone to watch. 
I would never tell someone to go watch this movie. Uh, Paradise Lost is my favorite book, my favorite piece of literature. It is unreadable. It is basically yeah. unreadable. I have read it. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I would never tell anyone to read it, right? I would never advise, I would never recommend it as a fun read for anybody, right? I, I absolutely understand the, just the feeling that some thing that you had a highly energetic experience with is actually an utterly niche product. That is like, it's the conditioning factors for it to be experienced as positive are so nuanced and variegated yeah. that it's like, how the hell could you hope to replicate that for another mm -hmm. person, right? So, um, yeah. yeah, I don't find it, I don't find that opinion really controversial or, or, or anything like that at all. I mean, like, I, I did say earlier, like I don't, um, this workshop is not something that I think everyone should take, right? I, I already know that people who are checking out my content and connecting with it, they are, as we said, a sort of self-selecting group, right? You're probably more sensitive. You probably have had experiences of neurotic discursive thinking in your art practice, right? Or else why the hell would you be interested in what I'm saying at all? If you've just been, and I've met them, there's plenty of artists that I've met who are just like, nope, I have felt great the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. And and they're total. they mean it. They really mean it. They're just like, I actually have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what you mean by you feel insecure with art or something like that. They don't need help. They really don't need help, right? And it, God bless them. Thank God they're out there, right? But they just don't need help. This is more of a self-selecting set of people who have encountered these just like really subtle and not talked about mental blocks with creativity and things like that. And, um, and that creates a self-selecting set where I think it is more likely that people will have those conditioning factors, but yeah, I think it'd be a very odd experience if you didn't have them, right? This, this, yeah. the, the kind of teaching that I do really would kind of hinge on that. So I'm, I'm right there with you, you know, and, and, that is why I felt the need to record something like this again, right? I want to, I want to show people like, here's the kind of people, right? This, this is likely the kind of people you'd be cohort with. Uh, look at their personalities, look at how they think, look at the problems that they're facing and from where they are deriving value and see if you think that feels right for you so that the people who are gonna hate that don't show up. Right, like it's just there's plenty of other places to go to get like really didactic instruction on particular aspects of art, like perspective drawing or how to draw airplanes or something like that. Right, this is this is different stuff in a lot of ways. Uh, and as soon as you said that you had a dissenting opinion, I started recording. So I hope you'll let me use your 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 dissenting opinion and your answer. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I fucking tricked you. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I, come on, I, come on. I, I, I'm glad as a when everyone was talking, I was like, oh, yeah, everybody here likes the workshop, of course, because they spent the money already. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already thinking of the viewer watching. It's like, this is, it's like redundant. So uh, I'm glad that you recorded it. No, but. yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll think I'll, and I'll, you know, like the video will reach an end point and then it'll black screen and then I'll put it with white text and now a dissenting opinion. And then we'll play that. <laughs>